All right, let's let's uh, first talk about some logistical things because now you guys will be, uh, at least for this class, this is the first time you guys will be manipulating manipulating things in Excel. So let's start with just a few uh, logistical issues. First, we can right we have a long list of stuff here, right? And so as soon as I rock down in my Excel um, field, I'm doing this on a Mac. You guys might be on a PC. It, it, um, so the menu options might be slightly different, but, the, but all the options that I'll discuss will work on your guys' PCs or, or whatever version you have. Um, so maybe I'm going down like, oh, geez, and then I'm going to be, wow, I'm like, gee, gee whiz, where am I, right? So I'd like there, I'd like maybe say a question um, 5.1, and, and so, yeah, so just for clarity, these are our, these correspond to the questions of our other poll. This is the refugio poll question numbers, right? So this is refugio poll question four, refugio poll question five, part one, part two, etc. So I want to know is this, you know, okay, this is Gulf of Mexico question, this is answered, etc. So what I can do is I can put my, I can select this entire row. Uh, and on Mac, it's it's the window menu, <clears throat> and uh, there are two options here. There's split and freeze panes. Freeze panes. Notice this this bar right above uh, changed. Okay, so here we go. Let's do that again. So here I have the row selected. If I come up here and I hit freeze panes, you'll, you'll see the you'll see the um, demarcation of the top of the cell change slightly, right? So if I go boom, it's going to change ever so slightly. But what will happen is now when my cursor is when my cursor is now in this part of the sheet, and, and I move up and down, this guy is frozen. That's where the term freeze paint. So now I can scroll down to row whatever 300 or something. And I can still have that up there. Some people prefer that, totally cool. I can also do this. I can also come up here and do unfreeze panes. I can also, same thing, have this guy selected and I can do um, split. Now it's it's in effect, when I'm down here, it's, it's in effect the same thing, but whereas in freeze panes, this part above, excuse me, this part above my divider was frozen, now I can move both of them. So it's just a matter of choice. Also, when it's we've just done, <clears throat> Um, the split, I can actually move this around as well in, in the midst. So I can do it that way or, again, that was where I selected an entire um, row. could also, for that matter, select an entire column or I could lock, I could pick a single cell. So check this out. So if I come up and if I do um, a split here, notice now I have now each of these, I can move each of these things independent of the other and uh, so again your style your size of screen <clears throat> up to you this does nothing to the data this is purely a a how do you display the data type of situation that's the first thing second thing let's have a look up here a lot of times because of <clears throat> transitioning from from version to version or or what have you you might get an issue where your columns change so one of the most common comments I get is, Dr. Anderson, the, there's a problem with the data, the stuff isn't displaying right. Like this. Okay, so I say there's something wrong, the data's all corrupted, and I can't make it work. What's wrong? Oh, it's all messed up. Um, this is, when you get these multiple pound signs, that's simply Excel's version of saying um, the thing, so here's an example. An example. Let's make this one thousand one thousand one hundred nine point three four five six. Okay. So if I click on this cell, the can you guys all see this? this is big enough? Uh, so this cell says it's says inside this area on this particular spreadsheet, <clears throat> we have a number that's one hundred nine point three four five six. Okay. Now if I squeeze this cell, have it have a look down here. Now it's become three point. 4, 6, 3.5, 3, right? So it looks as if the data has somehow gone away. But if I click on that cell, note it's still the same exact number. And it'll keep making it, it'll keep 
uh, 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 forcing it to display in you know rounding off as as need be. But then have a look. Well, I'll get to this one point. Now it's just 109. Now it's to the point where it can't make 109 and it can't round 109 anywhere, right? So it's just gonna start to give me these display things. If you guys get that, again, note that when I click on the cell, the data is all good, the data is still there. So that, if this happens, it's just simply an issue of, of fitting and, and everything, does not hurt your data, does not hurt anything. All I can do is I either just move my cursor to between these, these two, divide, the, the cell divider here, and click on it with my button and then drag and it'll make it the the um, the size I want or if I double click on that it'll pop to to the size such that anything in this row will be displayed without being truncated so here's a survey I did so my name's here so same thing if I double click on this it's gonna expand it beyond my name because there's somebody's name farther down that that went larger than than the number of um, decimal or the number of uh, places I have in my name. Cool. So those are the, I'd say the two biggest pr questions I get from you guys are, are you, you're not sure how to make how to make the data uh, you know do the splitting or whatever, or you get worried that you've somehow corrupted the data because of the cells being shifted, and that's not the case. Cool. Any other any other basic Excel logistics questions you guys have? Okay, everybody have a look back up here. So here's another thing I've done for you guys. Uh, every row here is numbered. Okay, so what I'm gonna recommend you guys do is we get start getting into your analysis. I'm gonna recommend you, you save this version, right? And keep this somewhere else. And then copy it and name it something like your name or working or something of that nature. And then that's the one I want you to work with. So if you accidentally screw something up, if you accidentally overwrite the data, no big deal. Just go right back to that original thing and, and, you, and you have that, that, uh, that pristine copy, okay? But this will come help us in a few minutes, but just note that what I've done is I've labeled all these, uh, every row has a number. So I'm gonna show you in a second how we can reorganize the data, how we can sort through the data, and if you ever want to bring it back to this configuration, our initial configuration, you can just sort by these numbers and say, put the data in order of, of those numbers. Cool? All right. Um, let us scroll down to the bottom. So do me a favor and scroll down to approximately row 650. All right, actually, yeah, we get, let, me, let, me, let me do it the right way. I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna click on my row nine, and I'm gonna say, uh, let's do split screen. Now let's scroll down to row 650. Everybody with me? All right, cool. All right, so. Here what I've done is I've totaled all the, or I, I've done some summary statistics for everybody. So in our first step for our write-up, you can just use this stuff, right? And, and so anytime you guys are gonna do any analysis, the first step is providing a broad overview. What's the big picture? What's the, what's the, what's the you know, overall result of this? So for that, so for the first part of your, of your thinking, of your writing, I would run down to the bottom here and look at this. This uh, first group of uh, rows, these first few rows, are all the surveys combined. So this, this includes the surveys we did at the start of the summer, right at the onset of the spill, and the surveys you guys did approximately three months later, right? Then, this set of responses is only for the stuff over the summer, and this, or excuse me, early summer, and this stuff is only for the stuff you guys did in the last few weeks. Cool? So you can look at it however you want. You can look at the overall, you can look at the, uh, you know, each of these guys independently. And so, for example, here, okay, let me further explain. This is the number of people that answered that particular question. As we know, not everybody always answers every single question. So the important uh, 
denominator in these um, in these types of questions is not how many people took the survey, it's how many people actually answered your particular question uh, that we're looking at right here. So in this case, we had 621 uh, individual people responded uh, to us. And this was the question about, is climate change a significant problem we should uh, you know, deal with now? Uh, 526 of those folks said that it was, 51 said they weren't, said that uh, it was not, and 41 said they were unsure. So all I've done is gone in and taken 526 and divided it by 621, and then uh, this is the proportional response. So um, not that you guys have to do statistics, but just as a note, um, we typically like to write 85% in this context, and that's totally cool. Um, uh, most statistics programs don't like you to input 85%. They like you to write that as a percentage. And so for just consistency, usually when I do these outputs, I just have this in a, in a fractional or proportional representation. But um, that's, that's solely to have more flexibility. Okay, so 85% of the people said that it was a problem uh, overall. And that was, that was broken into 83% of the people, or 83% 80, of the respondents said that over the summer, and 86% said that last month. Is that a significantly different proportion? Probably not, but if you want to, you can do a chi-square test on that, and you can actually answer that for yourself. But, but right, it's up to you guys whether you want to, uh, let's say, you know, have the individual data reporting for the two separate uh, data collection events or if you want to have them merged. Okay, make sense? So scrolling over that same thing is gonna is gonna continue. So it's gonna be the this row here is gonna be the the raw numbers and then this row below it is gonna be the proportion of uh, of the total that that corresponds to. Then we get to some other funky things. So for example, in this case this is how much seafood have you eaten over the past week? And in this case we had uh, a total of 616 people tell us their, uh, their answer. And, and again, this is where we see the value of when they said they didn't eat any, we actually put in a real zero. But if they just left it blank, we don't put anything in because that right strongly influences the, the, the quantification of this. Uh, and so what we see here is, uh, so the average, is, oh sorry, so then this one here in this case, this is the average. So 5.5 is the average uh, reported ounces of seafood consumed in the past week by those 600 odd people. Just below it, that's the standard deviation. So, and then it's a, there's a standard deviation of 9.6 um, ounces. So that's a, a fairly large standard deviation as we would expect. Because in other words, some people are probably eating a lot of seafood. Some people are not eating... Um, any. Uh, and then uh, because of that widespread, here's the median, right? When we have these large ranges of zeros to huge numbers, uh, median is just another way of representing the central tendency. It's not necessarily right, it's not necessarily wrong, but there we go. That's that. Again, these guys, just like normal, it's the sum total plus the uh, uh, proportional uh, response in the bottom. We'll talk about it, yeah, yeah, but right, yeah. You guys will do a, a text thing and then some graphs. Um, okay, again, over here, same thing. So the, the stuff has all been the same as what I've been scrolling over to the right. In this case, we've gotten another uh, a value, quantitative value that the people are reporting. In this case, it's how far do they drive to get to where they, um, to get to the, the beach that they were visiting today. Again, this is so an av people drove an average of 78.6 miles to get to where uh, we are with a standard deviation that's quite large, you know, almost 400 miles. It's a large variation. And the median is uh, 19 and a half. Cool. Um, and then this was the one where, where we just asked them to answer it, right? They filled in the blank, so there isn't really anything to really report there. 
but then we've gone and scored this. So here, here's scoring it. So again, uh, nobody was, nobody has been recently sailing, um, or, or, or I shouldn't say nobody. That's not, that's not right. Uh, less than one percent of the population have been sailing recently. Less than one percent have been doing boating activities. About five percent have been barbecuing, etc. Now realize, in this case, these are not ex this 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 case is not an exclusionary thing. So people could have ticked all these possible things. So this will be a case where if you were to report this, these are not gonna sum up to 100%, right? Okay, uh, all right, same old, same old responses, same old responses. Um, okay, so in this case, zip code, I've not done anything with the zip code. We certainly can. You guys are probably waiting to get in class, right? Well, they have a few minutes. They can wait. Um, so, so if you guys want to look at the zip code, that's totally cool. But I, I didn't really do any summary statistics on the zip code. It, it's a geo, You could do some geo statistics, but we didn't pull into GIS and that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, and then again, age is just like before. So this is the average age, or excuse me, the, the average number of years that people have reported living at their current residence. Uh, Etc. cetera. Uh, this is the gender breakdown. So pretty good. 50-50 just about. Uh, it was exactly 50-50 or as close as you can get um, in the summer. And we interviewed a few more guys than ladies um, lately, but that's probably not statistically significant. But again, if you guys are curious, you can do the chi-square on that. And then again, with languages, this is another one that, is, that does not sum to 100 because they could, they could pick more than one option. Cool, makes sense. So great. Um, so there we go. That's our stuff to look at. Now the next thing I want to note is how can we go about um, uh, asking some questions? And so we're going to talk about questions in a second, but let me just first go over the logistics of this. Here we go. Blah 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 blah. So the e and the easiest one to show is I think. And there's lots of ways to do this, but I'm going to show you one of the sort of idiot way to do this. Okay, let's scroll over here. Let's look at um, let's look at uh, if people thought climate change was a problem. Okay, so this is every. Let's just for simplicity, let's just look at the the both surveys together. This first one was uh, everybody all together. So in this case, this is all the men and all the women together think 85% of the overall population think climate change is a significant problem, okay? What if we want to do a quick and dirty look at just, hey, what about uh, the dudes? Do the dudes think differently than the women? We can come up to here. I can select all of our data. So I just, I've selected this one row. I've clicked on, in this case, 645. I'm just going to scroll up to the, the topmost part of my data, which is row 10 here. So I'm going to hold the shift key down and click that. Now I'm going to have, now I've selected all of that, all of the data between those two points. And now just let me just remind myself, okay, the male female breakdown is over here. And if it was a male, it was a one. So I'm, let me sort by column FD. So I'm going to come up here into the, my data uh, and, and Again, this might look slightly different on the PC, but I'm going to click the data option. I'm going to click sort. And now it's going to say, what do you want to sort by? And remember, I wanted to do FD, right? So I'm going to scroll till I get FD. Now realize I could do conditional sorting. I could sort by the, the males, and then I can sort by the young people. Or though you know you could you could add on multiple sorting things and it would it would do it in order of it would do it in order of the first thing I put it would do it in order of the first thing I put in the sort box then the second and third or whatever okay so let's just do this I'm gonna say okay okay let's just go check over here let's see what happened okay so it looks right because here there's nothing okay. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then these guys were all ones, 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 ones. And then these guys were all zeros. Now, if we were to go back and look right now, the data for my, my climate change number is going to be exactly the same, 
right? Because I haven't changed, I've sh shifted the data, but I haven't changed it. It's all the same data. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna delete this data. So I'm gonna come up here. Right. Oh no, I'm gonna delete all the females. Or we can do either way. We, we can do the, we can look at female either way. But so I'm gonna click that. Again, I've clicked the bot the bottom of the range. And now I'm gonna scroll up to the top. And I'm going to click that. And I'm gonna say, uh, you can do it different ways. I'm gonna say uh, clear contents. Now my data is all gone. This is why you want to save your data, right? Because <laughs> we start messing with it. Oh my God. But let's see what happened now. Let's jam on down. Okay. And remember it was 85% before. 81. This, this, this has some errors because there's no data in here for it to look at because we deleted a bunch of stuff. But, but, um, but this says uh, 81%, right? So, uh, and we could reverse that to get the, the female uh, answer, right? That's a very rudimentary way of doing what we would call cross tabulation or cross tabs. So, so uh, there's much more sophisticated ways to do this, which we can talk about. But, um, and, and then if I, I come up here and I could go back here and I could do undo clear, and I could do, and, and just, to, just to be clear here, if I scroll over, if I scroll over, right, we've resorted the data. So check it out. Now row 632 and 633 and 635 and 630 is all above row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So I can either just re, I've, I've undeleted, I've un, I undid the deletion. I could also undo the sort or I could just simply resort. In this case, I'll undo the sort and now the data is back to the way it was before. Does that make sense? Okay. So. Again, there's much more sophisticated ways to go about doing that, but at least at a minimum, you guys should know how to sort our data. You guys should know how to uh, you know, start to slice and dice this data as you guys see fit. Because each of you will have maybe a different take. Maybe you wanna know how the men and women think differently. Maybe you wanna know how the old and the young. Maybe you wanna know how the people that think climate change is not a problem, how, they, how their views of offshore oil drilling compared to people that think it is a problem, for example. So in that case, you would just pick whatever cell is no for the climate change question. The column, the, the column. Yeah, yeah, the, the column. column. Yeah, right. That's what sort of mm -hmm. Right, and, it, and it, would, it would suck all those guys together. There are more, there, again, there's lots more sophisticated ways to go about doing this, but, but at a minimum, you guys should all know this basic sort of Excel manipulation stuff.